Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel, where we dive into the mysterious and interesting books of the past. In this video, we'll be talking about the most dangerous areas in ancient Rome. Rome, one of history's greatest empires, had a peak population of more than a million people. Rome has its share of hazardous neighborhoods, much like any other metropolis. The residents of Rome frequently avoided these regions because of their reputation for having a high crime rate. With a peak population of over a million, ancient Rome was a thriving metropolis. Rome had its share of hazardous neighborhoods, just like any other metropolis. These neighborhoods were known for their high rates of crime, filthy conditions, and poverty. Subura. Subura was one of the most dangerous districts of classical Rome. This area of the city, which was close to the center, was well known for its crowded housing and unhealthy conditions. The Subura served as a major hub for illicit activities because it was home to numerous slaves and poor people. It was also well known for having brothels and pubs that attracted a wide variety of undesirable people. The Subura's winding streets were difficult for anybody to go through and also made it simple for thieves to flee. In the Subura, robberies, assaults, and pickpocketing were frequent occurrences. It was also a hub for organized crime, with numerous criminal gangs competing for dominance over the area. People lived in the neighborhood, which was highly populated, and that made it easy for criminals to operate unnoticed. Pickpocketing was one of the most frequent crimes in Subura. Pickpockets would prey on innocent victims in busy venues like markets or public restrooms. They frequently operated in teams, keeping the victim preoccupied, while one of them grabbed their possessions or money. In Subura, robberies were also frequent occurrences. Criminals frequently broke into houses and businesses to steal cash, food, and other valuables. In order to deter break-ins, residents of the Subura frequently had to strengthen their homes with locks or bars on the windows. Another common crime in Subura was assault. People frequently got into confrontations on the streets over trivial issues like imagined slights or disputed debts. These altercations might easily turn violent, with people getting seriously injured or killed. Another significant industry in Subura was prostitution. In order to make ends meet, women frequently sold their bodies, and brothels were a common sight in the area. However, a lot of these women were forced into prostitution against their will, and were often the targets of abuse and violence from their customers. The spread of sickness was further aided by Subura's unhygienic circumstances. Due to poor sanitation, illnesses including cholera, typhoid fever, and tuberculosis were widespread and frequently spread quickly. Because of the high mortality rate in the area, many kids were left orphaned and frequently turned to crime to survive. The people of ancient Rome struggled constantly to survive in the Subura. Every day, they had to deal with the prospect of crime, disease, and poverty. Nevertheless, despite these difficulties, the people of Subura managed to adapt and live. They established close-knit communities, assisted one another, and created a resilient culture that enabled them to withstand the storm. Nevertheless, in spite of these difficulties, the people of the Subura managed to adapt and live, and their fortitude is a testament to the human spirit. Esquiline Hill Another unsafe area in ancient Rome was the Esquiline Hill. The brothels and gambling establishments in this region were well known for drawing all kinds of shady individuals. Foreigners lived in significant numbers on the Esquiline Hill and were frequently subject to prejudice and unjust treatment. Due to this prejudice, there were frequent tensions and disputes between immigrants and native Romans. The northeastern region of the city has Esquiline Hill, one of the seven hills that made up ancient Rome. There was a mix of rich and poor people living in this highly populated region. Esquiline Hill had its own special perils, though they were not as great as those of the Subura. Esquiline Hill presented a number of risks, including the possibility of fire. Buildings in the vicinity were composed of wood and other flammable materials, and the area was heavily populated. Fires might easily start and spread quickly, burning residences and places of business and putting locals' lives in jeopardy. The city has a group of firefighters who responded to fires and made an effort to put them out in order to tackle this threat. The neighborhood's congested streets and lack of adequate equipment, however, frequently made their efforts difficult. Esquiline Hill also posed a risk of collapsing. The structures were frequently constructed on unstable ground, and the hill was prone to landslides and sinkholes. This put the safety of the locals in peril since buildings could fall down or sink into the ground. Many of the nearby structures needed to be strengthened with extra support, and some had to be demolished out of fear for their safety. Esquiline Hill experienced crime issues just like Subura. Residents nevertheless had to deal with pickpocketing, robbery, and assault, despite these crimes being less common than in other places. Residents frequently had to exercise caution 
when strolling through the region because of the neighborhood's congested, meandering streets, which made it simple for thieves to escape capture. Slaves and freedmen lived in considerable numbers on Escaline Hill as well. This community was frequently marginalized and lived in poverty, which could cause desperation and criminality, even if they weren't necessarily a threat in and of itself. There was a slave market nearby, where slaves were frequently traded like goods with little thought given to their welfare. Finally, the inhabitants of Esquiline Hill were put at risk due to the unhygienic circumstances there. Garbage and waste would build on the streets in the absence of effective sewage and waste disposal systems, resulting in the spread of illness. Cholera, dysentery, and tuberculosis were widespread illnesses in the region, and they frequently spread quickly as a result of crowded living circumstances. The people of Esquiline Hill managed to adapt and survive in spite of these threats. They established close-knit communities and watched out for one another, frequently exchanging resources and providing assistance when needed. Additionally, they created a vibrant culture with festivals and religious events that bonded the locals. Aventine Hill One of the seven hills that made up ancient Rome is Aventine Hill, which is situated in the southern region of the city. It was one of Rome's wealthier neighborhoods, with numerous wealthy people and god-related temples. However, there were still risks that the locals needed to be wary of even in this affluent community. The risk of theft and break-ins was one of the biggest risks at Aventine Hill. Numerous wealthy residents with expensive possessions lived in the area, making them easy pickings for burglars. The neighborhood's tiny streets and alleys made it simple for criminals to creep around and evade notice. Rich locals frequently needed to pay for private guards to keep their homes and possessions. Political violence was yet another threat on Aventine Hill. The hill was notorious for having ferocious political factions, and locals frequently sided with one or the other. This might spark violent protests and tense political arguments. There is a risk that the factionalism in the neighborhood would spread to the rest of the city, igniting riots and turmoil. Numerous temples honoring the gods were also located on Aventine Hill. Although these temples gave the locals a sense of togetherness and a place to pray, they also posed their own risks. Thieves frequently attacked the temples in an effort to steal gifts and other priceless artifacts. Additionally, as many religious organizations competed for control and influence, the temples might have been the scene of bloodshed driven by religion. Aventine Hill experienced sanitary problems and sickness just like the other Roman enclaves. The poorest citizens frequently lived in unhygienic conditions and were more likely to catch diseases like cholera and tuberculosis, whereas the wealthier residents had access to better housing and healthcare. Finally, natural disasters were common on Aventine Hill. Because of the hill's location on a fault line, local earthquakes were frequent. The neighborhood was also at risk of floods because of its proximity to the Tiber River. These natural calamities could endanger the occupants and seriously harm the buildings. Despite these risks, Aventine Hill people lived a reasonably secure and comfortable lifestyle in comparison to other parts of ancient Rome. They had access to improved living arrangements, healthcare, and educational opportunities, which reduced some of the hazards they faced. Even in this wealthy neighborhood, though, the locals still needed to be cautious and mindful of their surroundings. What made these neighborhoods so hazardous then? The reason is the high levels of crime that predominated in these neighborhoods. In ancient Rome, crime was a constant, and it was particularly common in the less affluent areas. There were frequent instances of theft, violence, and even murder. The absence of a trained police force was one of the primary causes of ancient Rome's high crime rates. The urban praetors, who were elected individuals in charge of upholding the law, were in charge of upholding law and order. However, they frequently lacked the resources and had restricted authority, which made it difficult for them to deal with crime. The absence of infrastructure in ancient Rome was another factor contributing to the high crime rates. Numerous districts had curvy, dimly lit lanes that were ideal for criminal activity. Life was made even more difficult for the people of ancient Rome by the spread of disease and the absence of sanitary conditions. So, how did Roman inhabitants conduct themselves in these hostile areas? They generally made an effort to stay away from them. Rich people rarely went into the Subura or Esquiline Hill, and when they did, they frequently hired bodyguards. On the other hand, the underprivileged were forced to reside in these areas. They frequently formed close-knit colonies that watched out for one another as they banded together for protection. They were, however, also more exposed to predatory criminal elements as a result. One of the most important effects of living in a dangerous area was how it affected day-to-day -day life. The people of ancient Rome had to be on guard all the time, guarding their backs. In case they were assaulted, they frequently carried weapons or wore armor. The Roman populace was psychologically affected by the threat. They frequently struggled to fall asleep at night and experienced frequent feelings of worry and anxiety. 
This was particularly true for women who were more likely to become victims. Despite the risks, life in ancient Rome wasn't completely miserable. With stunning architecture, fine art, and literary works, the city was also a center of business and culture. People in ancient Rome were passionate and lively, and they looked for happiness and purpose in all they did. Hope the video was insightful and interesting for you. For additional fascinating content about history and culture, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching this video.